election, questions over election integrity remain at the forefront. Almost all have been disproven and false as false conspiracies, but how do we get to a point in American history where a conspiracy is so easily believed? Reporter Colette Bordelion with our Scripps affiliate in Denver has the story tonight. It's exciting, I know. The little moments in life. When you get my super fashionable Crocs in there have ways we can all connect. Crazy mountain towns, they tend to embrace their, their eccentric crazies. But sometimes, when doing the most routine things, there's no avoiding a reputation. Now people are, are getting to know me all over again as that, that used to be that Oath Keepers guy. The Oath Keepers are defined by the Anti-Defamation League as a collection of right-wing anti-government extremists. Welcome back to the Colorado Switchblade. I'm your host, as always, Jason Van Tatenhove, coming to you from Estes Park, Colorado. And Jason Van Tatenhove used to work as the group's national media director, leaving around five years ago. And to be fair, at the time, I was listening to a lot of conspiracy theory-based newscasts. Now, Van Tatenhove is reflecting on why and how it all happened. I've had a pretty good addiction to conspiracy theory, and conspiracy theory really is the lifeblood of a lot of these movements. Throughout his life, he says he's always had a healthy level of cynicism. So much of conspiracy theory is it starts off with a grain of truth. Often an agenda behind that, people become blinded to it. I, I know I became blinded to it. He believes conspiracies turn dangerous when there's a potential for violence. Most people don't know what's true. They don't know, you know, maybe the election was stolen. It absolutely was not stolen. Saying the name of the game is weaponizing conspiracy theories. Fear is the, the gasoline that makes us all go. And that mental health is a key issue in who extremist groups target. That type of messaging really strikes home for people that maybe life isn't going so well. And let's face it, for a lot of people in this country right now, life isn't going so well. He says there is a way to bridge the divide, now writing a book about his experiences. I write about 2,000 words a day pretty consistently. Knowing the power words have and hoping to help others understand what's at play behind such beliefs. We're just not talking to family members anymore over the, the dinner table. And we need to get back to that. And it starts with listening and listening to what they're actually saying. A way he thinks we can come together over the little things we can all agree on. If it can make the world my daughters are going to inherit just a little bit better, then it's worth it.